can you keep chickens in a cold climate? The answer is yes. Let's get into some more details. I'm Ariel. This is Fifty Shades of Grey. She's one of our Icelandic hens. I know, is my glove a little scary? Look at her beautiful, beautiful coloring. And I love how our Icelandic hens have these little poofy hairdos. Not everyone is quite as poofy as hers, but isn't she cool looking? Um, I just love all their pretty colors in their feathers and variations. So here's a look at our morning routine, some tips and tricks that we've learned over the years, what our birds seem to like, and hopefully this is some helpful info if you are having a cold snap in your area right now and wonder how people keep chickens when it's this cold, because we get lots of practice because we get lots of cold. Another zero degree morning, we're going to talk about keeping chickens and ducks when it's way below freezing. back down toward the tiny house if you can see all the fruit trees in the front of it there are just totally frosted. The sun came up just a little bit ago. It's a little bit hazy in the sky so it's hard to see direct sunlight. When you get temperatures this low every bit of moisture that is in the air condenses out onto something and creates these beautiful beautiful ice crystal patterns. This is on the front window of the chicken barn. If you're new, welcome. I'm Ariel, along with my husband. We live in that tiny house back there in the background. We live a little over 6,000 feet above sea level in the Wyoming mountains. And it's winter here for, well, there's snow on the ground usually for about eight months a year. And uh, we get frost and freezes and occasionally snow through the summer as well. So we are a pretty cold climate. Look at all the pretty ice crystals on the door. So my hands slip. Hey kitties. We slept in the feed room overnight. This is part of the reason we have no mice in our feed room. That's on the wall inside the feed room. You can see that's what about eight degrees above zero Fahrenheit. What is that like 15, 15 below Celsius or something? This is the feed room you guys have seen before if you've watched any of our videos. And from this side, right now, is our little kitty box. It's all insulated and got lots of bedding in there and they love sleeping. Curled up in there at night. At least when they're not busy climbing the shelves of all the spare stuff and things like that. As you can imagine, water is one of the most important things when it's this temperature. We have this water heater set up. And you see how overnight and this morning they've kicked bedding into that. It looks dirty. We're going to go dump that. The dirt they have in here is mostly the bits of wood shaving bedding that they've scraped into it. But I dumped that out in the morning and there's still water in here. It's still liquid because of this water heater. If you live in very cold places, water containers made out of this kind of material are pretty important because they're one of the few things you can kick and knock ice out of without um, you know, busting it, cracking it, and so on. This is the duck's outside water tub for the day. I try to remember to dump it the night before so it's easier to have the ice out. I don't always remember, but today I did. So I'm gonna go grab a bucket of water. Our water all comes from our uh, gravity-fed spring water, but when it's this cold, I do like to put one bucket uh, in the shop overnight where it stays just a little bit warmer so that I have that to give them first thing in the morning.
fresh water is one of their favorite things being ducks and they had fresh water when they went to sleep last night but it's all frozen this morning of course and um they just love dipping their heads in it you can see <coughs> one of them just hopped right in the pan there they'll splash it all out here after a while and i'll give them some more but they love being able to splash in it in this cold weather if you see steam coming off it that is not because the water is super heated or anything it's about 50 degrees in the shop comes out of the pipe out of the ground about 42 degrees that's just the amount of steam it makes in the very cold morning air. And even though the chickens have their metal water inside on that heater that they can always get water, I like to give them some fresh outside during the day. You, you want to chew it? I know, he likes chewing ice. Um, this is what it looked like overnight. Um, it's froze solid, some pretty little ice crystals on it. I'm gonna go over here and just smash this out into our ice pile. Check out how high this has gotten. This pile is pretty much solid, dirty ice water. It will melt in the spring. That is why you need containers you can knock ice out of. Here are the various other days ice blocks. That's the ducks overnight tub. They don't need it during the day. That's just gonna sit there and, and defrost till evening when they want to go back inside. But once again, you see why having these rubbery flexi tubs is pretty key. Um, and you see how he loves chewing on ice chunks. He just, he's loved that ever since he was a puppy. Anyway, I also try to keep the ice out of the way because when you've got to blow snow, you get a chunk of solid ice like that in it, you will bring the blower to a dead stop and shear pins. So that's why the ice all goes in one pile. The board, if you're wondering, just keeps the ducks from coming in the chicken side and pooping in their water. That way the chickens have clean water because ducks love to poop in water. So this just goes back over here in its corner. I'm gonna pour just a little bit of water in there. They don't need a whole lot because I'll chickens do is sedately sip from their water. They don't climb in it and splash around like the ducks. And you can see we've already got ladies over there looking for a drink. They do seem to like the fresh uh, water that I give them in the morning best. That's partly why I do this. Check this out. Blondie there standing up on the rim of the tub. It's, there's a couple concrete blocks under there just to keep it a little above the bedding so they don't kick so much into it so quick but everyone else there peaches henna let's see who all we've got we've got everyone who's almost the same color latte etc are all over there getting little sippy drinks you can see golden boy announcing his presence to the world willie is our other rooster and that little shoot with the icicles hanging off it is what goes into the barn once again here you can see on every little bit of metal or anything that moisture could condense onto we got lots of ice crystals zero fahrenheit yes we want to bathe and splash in water we're ducks so then we give everybody their, their morning seed. This is our uh, homemade mix of seeds and grains. As you can see, they love it. This has been fermenting for the past, or sprouting for the past couple days. Um, fill this about three cups full, then fill it up with water. It swells up to the top. They're suspicious of me just sitting here this close to them while they want to eat. But if you want lots more details on this mix, go check out our recent video on making your own chicken feed. Um, it's uh, sun black oil sunflower seeds, wheat, barley, millet, milo, split peas, lentils, uh, oats, and some cracked corn. As you can see, they really like it. So we give most of it to the chickens, and they usually come in all around it there if I'm not sitting in their way. <laughs> you can see how, how much they like that. The amount I give them is based mostly on 
how fast they'll eat it. That will take them. They'll pick out their favorite things first. Every flock seems to have its own favorites. The sunflower seeds are definitely the favorites here. I'd say next in line are the, um, the split peas, lentils, and wheat are probably all tied for next favorite. The oats and corn seem to be the least favorite, but they eat them too. Um, anyway, I give them an amount that takes them 20 minutes or so to mostly clean up that tray. There'll be a few of them. <laughs> a few of the not so favorite things left for a little bit longer after that, but we do have Icelandic chickens, which um, are known for eating fairly small amounts of feed. So right now we've got 19 hens and two roosters, and if you have a similar amount of chickens but a different breed, yours may take a lot more feed. I love just watching them eat in the morning because they're so excited about it. Then we come back over here to the duck tub and give them a little bit of the rest of this. They seem to like just picking it off the ground. And since they also like picking it out of the water, I'll just use a little bit of their water to wash the rest of it out. And they all come. I don't know, wait for me to get out of your way. We do add a little bit of brewer's yeast to that mix. The chickens get it too, but it's mostly because the ducks require a little more niacin than chickens, and so they're getting that right in there with their grains and seeds. And they're all soaked and easy for them to digest, and they love picking them out of the snow and going back and forth between slurping food and slurping water, because that's what ducks do. As you can see, the door from their yard that they're securely in at night is wide open. They can free range, but as you look around the, the scenery out here, you can see there's not a whole lot for them to find for the day. So at this time of year, we also usually give them some extra protein. This morning, it's in the form of freeze-dried soldier fly larva. Here, chick, chick, chicks. They love this stuff. I try to spread it around so that they all get to peck some and scratch it up like if it was summer and they had live crawly bugs to find. Um, we also give them, we kind of alternate. So today it's meal, or uh, sometimes we do mealworms. This is soldier fly larva, which is similar. Uh, some mornings we do frozen, chopped up fish heads and guts, which is another excellent source of protein. We save from any time we uh, fillet a fish. They love it. Just chop it up with the axe. If you guys have watched videos in the past, you've seen that. So we alternate some source of a little bit of extra protein. I'll give them a few handfuls scattered around. They're all going to find. And then we'll give a little bit to the ducks over here because they also love it. Foggy and Ever are a little indignant that I'm in their way here right now, but I just wanted to show you we do pick up the eggs multiple times a day when it's this cold because otherwise they will freeze and burst. What's left in there is our little golf balls that we just left as a, a plant to encourage the, the new layers to lay in the boxes. It's worked great, they always do, but we just leave them in there. But barely daylight, we've already got one egg. Some of our hens like to lay early in the morning, some like to lay later, but I am going to bring this inside because otherwise it will freeze and burst. Okay, so we've got our noisy ladies outside. Blondie's now in here laying an egg, so we're going to talk quietly about what we do and don't have in the barn here. So there's been a ton of questions recently by people who have chickens often for the first time, which is lovely, asking out, you know, what do you do when it gets really cold? Because there's some cold snaps going across the country right now. A lot of them are not nearly as cold as our routine regular temperatures. So we have this little chicken barn space. The the chicken side of it here is 10 by, what is this, 10 by 12. Um, and they have plenty of room to hang out in here. We have high perches 
because of our breed. So the first thing we've done is we selected a breed because our, we do live in an extremely cold climate that is cold hardy. Our chickens are Icelandic chickens. You can see they're all pure Icelandic. You can see the huge variation in colors they have. That's uh, very normal for the breed, as you can guess by their name. They come from a cold part of the world and they do very well in the cold here. But most chicken breeds are fairly cold hardy. The main things they need are to be able to be out of the wind and to be dry. Humidity, if you've ever used like a down jacket or a down sleeping bag or anything, you know as soon as it gets wet, it is no longer warm. Well, basically their coats work the same. Um, if they get wet, they are no longer warm. So we have this nice dry barn area. It's totally dry here. We've got fairly deep litter. They scratch it all over the places. So in places it's a foot and a half deep. Here they had it scratched a little thinner, but they can burrow in there if they want. They do sleep up on their high perches at night, but it's totally dry in here. There is no moisture. There's a little bit of venting up by the top of the roof. Um, they can freely come and go. The door's right behind the camera there, the little chicken chute that goes out to their yard, and there is no breeze. Um, the little bit of ventilation up at the top is well above where they are. That keeps any moisture from building up in here because, as you can probably see just from my breath talking in here, that's creating moisture. Um, but they can get out of the wind and they can be dry. They have access to water all the time. Uh, I have a whole video about this water heater, but it's basically a little metal. It looks like an upside down pie pan underneath here. And the cord goes right out the back there between some concrete blocks so they can't possibly peck on it. And it has to go with some kind of metal water like this. Um, but that the manufacturer only claims it keeps water defrosted down to about 10 degrees above zero. We've never had an issue with it down to 30 below, it keeps it defrosted. So they can always get fresh water because that is important. Dehydration is not something you want your chickens to have. They, you've seen now what we do for the feeding. We've got nice dry snuggly nest boxes, which they seem to like. Blondie is one of our very good hens. She's producing us another egg right now. But what we don't have in here, this barn is not actually insulated. It just is a sheet of plywood. That's what you're looking at. That's a sheet of plywood on the framing. It's not insulated and it is not heated. A lot of people, I, this is one of the things I really wanted to talk about. A lot of folks out there right now when they see a cold snap coming are putting, you know, um, some kind of heat lamp or something into their chicken coop. In my opinion, this is pretty dangerous. For one, I already saw somebody who I only know through like MeWe uh, in a chicken keeping group the other night burned, their whole chicken barn burned down because of the heat lamp. I know so many people have hi had fires from heat lamps. My brother and sister-in-law, theirs was, you know, for something else. It wasn't even for chickens, but they had one out in their garage, burned down the, the shop, the garage, nearly killed them and my uh, three little nieces in their house. Heat lamps are pretty dangerous. I really, really recommend not using them. I know lots of people use them, but they get shorts, they get knocked over, and they, uh, they burn down a lot of places, and that's really sad. Anyway, chickens are good at keeping themselves warm, as long as they can be dry and out of the wind. So this is not heated at all. It gets to, again, we have winter here for at least eight months a year. It hasn't been above freezing in nearly three months. Um, the last five day stretch here has been particularly cold. I think it was minus 21 here. The one night uh, we had four out of five days where it didn't get above zero for the high during the day. Um, and they've been fine, totally fine. And there's no heat in here. So I just wanted you guys to know that and kind of see that. And they're outside during the day. They're out in the snow, they're out in their yard, etc. They can come in here anytime they want but they don't until late afternoon. They start coming back inside and the, the ladies come in and out to lay, but they don't just hang out in here. They could, but that's not what they choose to do. One of the other things they do for feeding, especially in the cold, is make sure they have access to, to some extra fat. So this is just a commercial, that one's not quite gone. Um, so a cake like you'd buy for wild birds. It's one of those little feeders, it just hangs right here. This block they've mostly eaten. If I just put it here, they'll peck up the rest of it. Um, 
A lot of times I actually, of course, don't have one now when I want to do this video, but I save the extra fat from when we butcher uh, like the elk and that extra fat that Clay's friend gives them, it's actually beef fat, and we grind it up and, and make little balls and they love packing that apart. They seem to like it much better than this stuff, but I always make sure they have some extra source of fat. It's just free choice if they think they need it, they can get it, and uh, they do seem to enjoy that in the cold weather. So we get lots of questions and I see lots of questions not always directly addressed to me about keeping chickens when it's very cold out. <laughs> As you can see, we do that and it works. Um, as far as anything else that... <coughs> if our golden boy rooster here will let us talk. They do get kitchen scraps and such at times. We don't have a lot of that, but we do have some friends who, including one who works in a restaurant, who will save things for them. So here's a little bit of now frozen solid celery that I gave them yesterday that was being discarded. They do like to peck around that, so we give them that kind of thing for some variety. Um, they also enjoy things like a pumpkin, which I just smashed open for them, and they eat all the seeds out first, and then they eat the flesh. Or in a second here, you'll see them eating some of the sprouts, same ones we grow for ourselves. If I have a little extra, I'll just give them a handful of fresh sprouts in the morning too. That's, we just try to keep a good variety of different things in their diet at all times. Like I mentioned, Icelandics are a very, very cold hardy breed. They originated from jungle chickens, like all other kinds of chickens in the world, but they were brought to Iceland supposedly about a thousand years ago by Vikings, and they've been isolated there ever since, and the ones that survived and were kept were the ones that did well in the cold. So you can see the huge variety of colors and feathers and even comb styles. That's another thing I want to talk about. The one thing that can happen in the cold is frostbite injuries to either wattles or combs. Most of ours have kind of compact rose combs. They come in all kinds of, of comb styles. Those are the most cold hardy. Some, like Golden Boy, used to have some points on his comb. Um, his very first winter, he got some frostbite on that he stood up pretty tall. And Willie, who you can hear over there, who's just out of the picture, has a, a much more bunchy rose comb, and his never frostbite at all. But Golden Boys did frostbite a little bit on the top. Again, we have extreme cold beyond what most cold snaps that you guys, <laughs> uh, most people are having. And it uh, just kind of healed up the, the little points uh, where the tissue was dead, dropped off. He's been fine. He didn't seem to ever be in any pain or anything, and he just doesn't have points on his comb anymore. Uh, for the most part, I didn't really see any of the ladies get frostbit. Some of them have floppier combs. If I'm picking the ones I'd choose to keep here, you know, over the years, if we have extra hens, I would, I would, and roosters, um, if there's not other temperament and, <coughs> and so on issues, I do keep ones with shorter, more compact combs because they are more frostproof. But we have hens with floppy combs, and I've only ever seen one or two of them get a teeny bit of frostbite right on one tip. Again, it seems to heal up with no issues. Um, I've never, I've kept an eye on it. I've never seen it get infected or anything. But again, this is happening when we've got a climate where we, there is, you know, cold for months and months and months. So I just wanted to do a little video encouraging folks that you can keep chickens when it's cold, even if it's not cold for, <laughs> for so long or so, so cold where you live. It is very possible. Chickens are quite cold hardy. They, uh, they also have deep bedding out here they can burrow into. They go out across the snow. They go under the lean-to and scratch in the gravel. Um, they, you know, they're pretty happy and content. And it is very possible to keep chickens in the cold. And <coughs> primarily to know that you don't, uh, as long as they can get dry and out of the wind, um, you don't need things like heat pumps that are going to possibly burn your barn down or your house and kill all of your birds and create a lot of other damage. So hopefully that's encouraging. If I forgot something that you have a question about doing in very cold weather, um, just let me know. You can see this has been probably 40 minutes now since I gave them their feed here and they've eaten all their favorite things out. There's some oat shells left in there. They'll continue to peck at them through the day. Um, but they've eaten most of that. And a little later on in the day, sometimes I'll give them a little bit extra if they seem to want it. They're, uh, 
they're still pecking around at other stuff in here. They always have access. I don't try to, you know, ration their feed at all, especially when it's this cold. If they want to eat, they can eat. If they want more fat, they can have more fat. If they want, you know, more protein, they can have more protein. Um, it takes a lot of energy for a body to stay warm when it's cold, for me or for them, and so we just be sure they have all the feed they could want. Hopefully that's helpful. Because they do range freely, now you can see a bunch of the flock is over here in the lean-to going through the wood pile. That is one of the few places in between all the tools and spare stuff, but that is one of the few places they probably do find some bugs at this time of year. Any little larva or spiders or anything that are hiding in the wood pile. So we love to have them go through that and get a hold of any of those. Right now they're all down on the pallets, but they will be up on top of the pile at times too. And uh, they're pretty good bug patrol. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.